To every popular hero in existence, you have to have a villain to become their arch nemesis, someone that can prove to be a great rival and polar opposite to their adversary. Batman has Joker, Superman has Lex Luthor, Goku has Frieza, and I guess the same thing could be said for log cows on the internet. While they're not exactly viewed as heroes, there are certain trolls in their community that tends to have that connection. Christian had Liquid Chris, Wings of Redemption had Sean Ranklin, and Darkseid Phil had Tevin. He also had Sons of Kojima, but that's a story for another day. DSP and Tevin have had quite the back and forth over the years. You would notice in my documentary on DSP that I would avoid mentioning anything that involved Tevin, because I feel like to go over their relationship, it deserves to have its own video. So what we're going to do today is look back on the history of how this whole internet beef started and how it sort of ended, kinda, I guess. Anyway, please be sure to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss out on any uploads when they come out. Jeez. Like, what is that? Why, why should I be stealing your kill from 10 feet away? Did they mix the teams up because both of these teams suck now? What was that? What was that little parade I had right here with all of, with all of these pistol kills? Eight and fucking old. Eight and fucking old. I land a helicopter over here to help my team out of tribe. Wow. I land a fucking helicopter over here to try to help my goddamn team out. LAV spawn right next to my teammate. No, he a bad sniper, so he just standing there aiming, aiming down the fucking sights. Fuck, man. Tevin got his start on YouTube on July 5th, 2009. He was your average YouTube gamer channel, doing Let's Plays of The Walking Dead and old school platformer games like Croc. He was also doing live reviews of Android tablets and other useless shit. Hello Internet, today I am going to be covering the iRulu 7 inch tablet PC with Android operating system. I believe it's Android version 4.2. I need to double check that, obviously. I have here with me a baby blue one and a pink one. I have no way of knowing which one is baby blue and which one is pink. I really wish they would have labeled it on a box somewhere. And we have the actual tablet right here. Nothing too, oh, nothing too, um, nothing too brilliant. It honestly looks a lot like another tablet I got from another company that didn't have like an actual name brand and it was terrible here's the pink one uh, well I guess I guess the colors are okay uh, this is the pink one I forgot to mention also I bought both of these for my um, nieces for Christmas time this one starts up just as good as the other one We get our nice little jingle. <sighs> anyway, this is um Tevin C signing out. If this video helps you out, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, whatever they call it. Leave a comment, subscribe. And I will have more video game videos, vaping videos, and some review videos every once in a while. See you later. But it was pretty decent content for the time. Well, Tevin released his first DSP related video, which was a This Is How You Don't Play of Battlefield 3. Mounted gun. That's it. What? There was a guy up there. Are you serious? A guy came up from behind me. Alright, he's dead. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What the fuck is he in? This asshole using a laser sight in the middle of the day in bright sunlight and it supposedly works. Yeah, right. <laughs> Fuck, man. This is so annoying. This stupid asshole with a laser sight. <laughs> laser sight. Yeah, he, he touched his back like he like had a bug bite. <laughs> it's fucking bullets, dude. And bro, I gotta tell you. Watching DSP play first person shooter games is fucking terrible. He's not just bad at aiming, I don't think he understands what the concept of aiming is. Don't even get me started on his Overwatch gameplay, it's literally a 5v6 for his team every time. Oh! 
He's gonna use his ultimate. Oh no, she used her shield. That was smart. I thought I thought he had his ultimate. Oh, she used her shield. Z Zarya used her shield to save Zenyatta. I was gonna kill him. Well, that was pretty good. I ended up distracting most of their team at the goal. What the fuck? How'd I lose my health that quick? That's bullshit. That is fucking bullshit. I lost my health way too quickly. Well, there you go. Double kill, baby. Anyway, we get another This Is How You Don't Play from Tevin going over his dying light playthrough. And finally, we get our first video where Tevin records himself shitting on DSP. He was taking on the topic of fear grinding his way through Bloodborne. Get ready to ship bricks. <laughs> okay then, as you can see, I basically equally tried to level everything except for Blood Tinge because I'm really not that good with the gun, and that's really the primary stat that it affects, but everything else has been insanely increased. I'm way overpowered, as people will say, but the thing is, with the insight going up, I get the feeling it's going to be a lot tougher because I leveled, and the bosses are probably still going to kill me, and the achievements to deaths are still going to kill me, so... What's up you guys, Tevin C here, and I woke up planning on playing Bloodborne today, but before I started I decided to look up a few videos, and I came across our favorite Let's Player, Dark Side Phil, playing Bloodborne. And Dark Side Phil is on about, I think the third or the fourth boss, maybe he's on his way to the fifth. Uh, I'm not completely up to date because there's some things you can miss and some things you won't miss. But the dude is level 97 in Bloodborne. And he just fought, uh, I think she's called a Bloodstarved Beast or something. I don't know why I consider that boss the she. But um, he more or less steamrolled a boss. He didn't learn any pattern. He didn't use his gun at all. He just kind of ran up to it, hitting it over and over and over and won. And people are more or less complaining in the comments. I use the word complaining even though I don't consider it complaining. But they have a problem with him being level 97. Because he is going to more or less get through the game easier than he should. And it will make watching someone play the game less entertaining if they're only level... Well, if they're over leveled and level 97. As opposed to being level 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, you know, gradually rising up. He just instantly level 97. It's almost like having your Pikachu at level 100 before you fight Brock. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room. Of course, DSP, most, most people know this dude at, at this point in time for videos other people made. But this is how you don't play videos. And I've even made, I think, three of those. I'm going to be completely honest. It's not, it's, it's not a such thing as a right way and a wrong way to play a video game. In most cases some video games are more fun if you play them a certain type of way but you can pretty much get through any game more or less playing any type of way you can kill every enemy in Metal Gear Solid and still win the reason why I make these videos I've only made three I don't really think I'm gonna make any more but the reason why I make these videos or made them is this dude is a let's player and he makes gaming videos to entertain other people. He's just not playing the game for himself for his own entertainment. And that's where the problems come in. And that's where people come in saying, oh, he's playing the game the wrong way. He shouldn't be this level. He shouldn't be doing it this way. He should be doing it that way. He should do more side quests. He should play more classes. You know, all kind of different ways people will like him to play all kind of different games. Is it the right way and the wrong way to play a game? And I give that a simple and short answer. No, it's not. And Seven stated that Phil's responses were pretty much data for him. He was watching DSP's early content when he was a teenager, but then took a break when he turned 18. He looked up Phil's channel when he turned 24 and was amazed by the constant downfall he's had over time. I'm going to go all the way back to day one, way back in 2008, 2009. Okay. The first Let's Players I watched on YouTube, and I said this plenty of times before, it was SSOH, SSOHPKC, and Dogside Phil. That was the first two Let's Players I watched on YouTube, period. This was in 2008, 2009, around that area. I was 18. I was, I was 18. 
I was 18. This is before I got a job back in uh back in those days. I was mad, like depressed, down in the dumps every fucking day. So I go on YouTube, just randomly, and find uh, you know videos from these two people. And I didn't really care for DSP too much until Street Fighter 4 came out. When Street Fighter 4 came out, that's when I really started watching this stuff. Because I didn't really care for Street Fighter 4 as in playing it. But I liked watching it. It was a hype game to watch. It still is a hype game to watch. But I fucking hated playing it. So I used to watch uh, Dark Side Phil play Street Fighter 4. A lot. Like that was one of the few th videos I even watched on YouTube. So fast forward to 2014 right fast forward to 2014 I got back into watching YouTube videos and I had a slightly different uh, a slightly different interest I was watching a lot of Jim Sterling and a lot of Total Biscuit videos back then and I remember a Jim Sterling video he was playing some shitty indie game and he was getting bited at the game right and he said oh I'm not gonna DSP it here like basically trying to say he's not gonna blame the game for doing bad and I thought to myself, like something went off in my head, I was like, holy shit, I remember DSP, he ought to be fucking popular as fuck now, it's been years since I watched him, when I watched him in 2008 and 2009 he was popular, he should have like a million subs now, yeah, um, what was I saying, oh, so I, I go to look up DSP, I'm like, oh man, let me see what Dark Side Phil been up to all these years, I remember watching his videos all the time, when I was a teenager, you know, like I said, I fucking started watching him when I was 18, and I go back to look at his shit when I'm 24. That's a big difference. That's a big difference in age. So I go back to look up his stuff and uh, yeah, you search DSP and you find a bunch of stuff that's not DSP but stuff made by people making videos about DSP. So uh, yep, started watching uh, This Is How You Don't Play, started watching some stuff on his channel, pretty much trying to catch up uh, catch up on what been what's been going on for the last what five six years I, I can't count I don't even feel like trying to figure out how much years that is but I was trying to figure out what had been going on for all those years right fast forward to when Bloodborne came out DSP was playing Bloodborne at the same time I was streaming Bloodborne and I actually purposely nerfed myself you could say in that game to make my uh, to make my streams more fun, at least I thought I'd be making it more fun. It's not really fun to be over leveled in a game like Bloodborne or Dark Souls or Demon Souls or whatever. At least I don't think it is for the viewer. But um, yeah, I was watching DSP play it, and he had I think he leveled himself up to like 96. I think, yeah, I think he was level 96. Stupid over level. Like, stupid, ridiculous over level. And I had a problem with that. And at the time, I was, I was, I remember I was watching this video. I was watching the video he uploaded when he was, uh, like, oh, I'm level 96 now. Blah, 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 blah. And this is nothing new with DSP because he is known for cheating from software games. He's pretty much did this with damn near every game from software put out. And Demon Souls, he grinded his way from level 97 and was still getting his ass kicked by everything. Okay everyone, welcome back to Demon Souls. And boy have things changed since the last time I played this game. I have been power leveling my character for the past week. And I actually went back to 1-1-1-2 and I believe it's 3-1 or 4-1, whatever the stage is with the skeletons. And I've been leveling like crazy. I actually found cool, rare loot that you're going to see. Uh, and uh, I really feel like now this week I have a better chance of tackling the game. Last week the game whooped my ass. This week Dumas is returning to whoop the game's ass. I've also been publicly called out by 4chan today. They said that they're going to try to ruin my game by making stages 2-1 and 4-1 be uh, negative, uh, whatever it's called, the, the, the dark uh. affinity or whatever. And they think that it's going to make the game harder for me. However, I've leveled so much, I don't think it's going to affect anything, as you're about to see. Those souls are as good as fucking mine. From software, fuck you. I'm getting all your fucking souls. Those demons are going down. Here we go. Ready? Everybody ready? Here it comes. That's right. 
Level 90 fucking 7 Dumas, motherfuckers. 90 fucking 7. Suck on that. Did not cheat. I only grinded in level 1 through, uh, 1, 2, where the Tower Knight is. I went back and killed a whole bunch of those, those stupid knights, which is why I have so many healing items. And then I also, uh, went to where the skeletons are, and that's where I primarily did the leveling in that first skeleton level. Alright? I also found, I want to show everyone, and see, you can tell I didn't, I didn't dupe. Look, I still have the fucking souls, okay? Um, I actually will show you, here was what I got. Mail breaker. I don't even know where I got this fucking sword. It just like appeared. Here, I'll move the, the camera again. In Dark Souls 2, he was spamming that lightning shit to cheese the bosses out. Shit, the dude was even called out for guy reading during his Sekiro playthrough. He was beating the bosses way too quickly for someone of his skill level. Again! Really? People are saying that's it? Are you serious? That's the end of the game? I beat him? That's it? That was fucking super easy. Are you kidding me? There's no way that's the last boss. There's no fucking way that's the last boss. Are you kidding me? That was it. That was the final boss? That was the final boss. You guys aren't shitting me. That was easy. That was fucking easy, dude. <laughs> That was actually easy. He didn't have any things that put you in lock stun. He really didn't have many cheap attacks. He just had a big attack radius. But as long as you get outside of the attack radius, you can parry or hit him. I didn't know, I didn't even know what to do against the movie who was charging. It was unblockable. I didn't know what to do and I still survived. That's seriously it. You guys are kidding me. You guys gotta be kidding me. That, you guys are fucking with me. That's not the end. There's another boss. Everyone says it's the hardest boss in the game. He's one of the easiest bosses I've ever fought. That's easier than most Dark Souls bosses. So Tevin was finding these DSP videos to be quite successful, and pretty fun to do. He was even making parody videos of the well-known series, DSP Tries It, reviewing his own snacks with the mannerisms of DSP. Tevin C. Tries It. What's up you guys, Tevin C. here, and today <clears throat> I'm going to try something a little different, and I'm going to call it Tevin C. Tries It, where I basically try food products you know, electronics, all kinds of different things that I use in my everyday life, okay? And today, we're going to be trying out Fanta, Orange Fanta to be specific, and Nacho Cheese Doritos, okay? I already have them prepared here on a plate and in a glass. And I'm going to let you guys know what I think about it, okay? First, we're going to try... The Fanta. As you see, it's an orange color, just like the flavor it claims to be, okay? I'm going to take a sip. And first impressions, it does have an orange taste to it. But it also has that generic citrus flavor that most drinks like Fanta have. And as you see here, it says... 100% natural flavors, okay? And here we have the Doritos. You see, I got the party size Doritos because it was more Doritos for my value, okay? I have them sitting on a plate here. And as you may see, most of the Doritos are broken, which is complete bullshit because it says nowhere on the bag that these Doritos may come damaged in the bag okay I pay all of my money for these Doritos and half of them aren't even complete look at this dude I mean come on man half of my Doritos are broken and that's complete bullshit he was having a great time making fun of DSP like we all do but after these fun parody videos and this is how you don't plays Tevin started to take a more in-depth look into DSP's character he was quick to call him out on his bullshit, and the war between the two suddenly start to form. His audience was taking notice of Tevin's rise in popularity, and they really didn't like it. DSP did his best not to mention Tevin, or bring him up during screams, but of course he couldn't help but let his toxicity towards him flow at some points. If someone like Tevin would, if, if he rebroadcast my streams, whatever, right? If he rebroadcast my streams, whatever. 
even though he complained about me broadcasting his rebroadcasting his streams and he know we can't do anything about it because it's youtube and it's not twitch he know that we not we not slow here dave if he would just not be malicious what he needs to realize is that when he constantly says like just like annoying grating shit when i say annoying grating shit i would love for him to tell me what annoying grating shit i say and uh, we got hi, Tevin. Oh, shit, Tevin's broadcasting. So about me? Hot. That it hurts. It hurts. I don't care if people want to make fun of me, but he takes shit, like, to the extreme. I'm sorry you let another grown man hurt you, Dave. I'm sorry you're so weak to let that happen. Do you cry to yourself to sleep, to sleep at night? Do you need some gin and you think about me as you sit on your seat made for, like, eight people and your girlfriend sleep? Do you think about me at night, Dave? How does it feel to be cooked by a stranger? Like People gravitated towards Tevin Style and shitting on DSP because he broke down DSP's logic without spewing out a meme every chance he could get. His outlook on whatever DSP brought good was met with pretty fair criticism by Tevin. But there were moments where DSP did get under his skin just a little bit. He's not oh, gonna by tell the us. way, I have your IP, I have your name, and I have your address. Are you... I have your IP, I have your name, and I have your, ad your address. You said this in a video, bruh? Wow. Please, DSP, please do something to be awesome one in person so everybody can send your fucking lame... Let me shut up. Wow. You have your IP, you have his name, and you have his address. Wow. You didn't have to Google search him, uh, docs him, did you, DSP? No, you figured it out on your own because your website a piece of shit. Because if you fucking use DSP's website, guess what, guys? You use DSP website and use his chat, yet yeah, you're asking to be doxxed. Because if you do something like Be Awesome one did, you're going to have some asshole on, on, on camera uploading a YouTube video saying that he knows all, all your information. It's ridiculous. You better take a sip. You fucking sleazy asshole. Seven even found himself crashing Phil's Patreon screen. That was meant for only him and his fans to play Street Fighter together. Fight. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh wow! Great move! Insane damage. Very nice. I didn't do that. I didn't want that. See, I'm willing to admit bullshit when it happens. Half the shit that I'm hitting with, I'm not doing. He just mashes jab. It's so ridiculous. And what other Street Fighter game could you just mash jab and get perfect anti-airs? None. But they made it like that in this game because this game fucking sucks. Standing jab should not be a perfect fucking anti-air in any fucking fighting game. But Capcom didn't know what the fuck they were doing with this piece of garbage. Just from uh, different people. Based on, a re based on a review of community reports about your activity or content, we have issued a community guideline strike on your account for a reason. Harassment. And, indef and indefinite suspension? They issued, okay, issued the strike and indefinite suspension. From accessing or using Twitch services, content determined to have been related to this violation may be removed. Yeah, the whole fucking channel is removed. I don't, I don't, I'm just saying, but okay. Please note that creating access and using or appearing on other Twitch accounts at any point during the suspension is prohibited. Well, fucking obviously. Additional violations of the terms of service and community guidelines may result in a prolonged or indefinite suspension, but I thought it was already indefinite that. So that's fucking exciting. On August 2nd, 2018, Tevin got his Twitch account perma banned for harassment. Now, while DSP has come out and said that he wasn't responsible for getting Tevin's account shut down, it was speculated that he got some of his loyal fans to mass report his channel. And remember previously how I mentioned that DSP's fans didn't like Tevin? 
where they really, and I mean really, didn't like Tevin. And I just wanted to go over what passes and a partner stream of chat, what passes on Twitch.tv apparently, since recently I got my account permabanned and two other people that call out DSP's antics on the internet got their account permabanned. So I want to give you a quick rundown of what's okay and what's not okay in DSP's chat. So let's go over what is okay. No, first, I'm tripping. Not gonna run, not gonna record this over. Let's go over what's not okay in DSP's chat. From uh, Twitch loves me in my streams, they did a 95 chair, 95 bit chair. So that means Dave get he got paid. 95 cents he's gonna get in two months from that post. They said ban, ban, ban as fast as you can. That was the only post in the chat. They got either banned or timed out. That's why you see the picture in gray. Uh, you have another one. Shout out to Snort Burnell, 95 bits. Love you, Dave. That grayed out, either a ban or a timeout. More than likely a ban. So, <laughs> this isn't okay. Just remember that if you ever go to his chat. Post like this, not okay. Not cool. Don't do it. So, let me... Uh, Pulling this up on my own computer to look at for now. Made it this all together to look a little look nicer. I'm gonna go over what is okay to say in our buddy Dark Side Phil chat. On twitch.tv, the site for Golden Boys. There's only Golden Boys allowed to stream now. Report them trolls apes. That's okay. Tevin is a low life. Well, obviously that's just his opinion. Nothing's wrong with an opinion. Is Tevin a troll? That apparently got that guy either timed out of ban. He got AIDS, so you can say Tevin has AIDS in his chat. Perfectly fine. Obviously. Uh, from Be Attendee, I'd kill Tevin. Well, obviously, this is perfectly okay. We're just having a normal, a normal adult conversation in a Twitch chat. We're just having fun watching one of our favorite streamers on Twitch.tv. I mean, come on. When you watch a gaming stream don't you usually say that you would kill somebody this is perfectly normal nothing is wrong with this uh let's see we uh also have another one let's see what we can find here might have to scroll a good bit to find this one we have to the response of i killed tevin because i mean this is what this is what normal people say when they have normal conversations obviously <clears throat> will you I give you all my money. I won in Vegas in 21 if you do. So Obi-Wan Kenobi from Dark Side Fields Chat on Twitch has confirmed that he is willing to pay Be Attendee all the money he won in Vegas if he kills Tevin. This is still a perfectly fine chat conversation. I mean, obviously it is because neither one of these people got timed out or banned and uh, DSP didn't discipline him at all. And no mods disciplined him at all. But is Tevin a troll? Got timed out or banned? Uh, ban, ban, ban as fast as you can. Got timed out or banned? Uh, let's see what else was, wasn't okay to say. And love you, Dave. From shout out to Snort Burnell. That got timed out or banned. That wasn't okay. That, that went over the line. Horrible. Horrible. Toxic fucking chat. That needed to be got the fuck out of here. Get him out of here! And uh, let's see. Apparently, I hurt his family, even though I never contacted him directly. Or never contacted his family directly. I guess I do what everybody else on the internet does. Well, this fucking shocks me. Uh, what happens in what happens here in Vegas stays here. Just wait. What happens in here stays in here, just like Vegas. Well, don't know how I'm doing this video. Obi Wan Kenobi. I want a thousand dollars. In Vegas, he said to Woomi OS, and regular viewer guy, is that gonna is that going to feel or to hit man? He didn't respond to that. I just wanted to give you a quick rundown of what's okay to say and what's okay to do on Twitch.tv, especially in Dark Side Fields chat, and what's not okay to do. Just uh, just remember that. Keep your head up, and enjoy life, <laughs> because I I suppose I am. Hopefully the hitman don't come for me. And it's really funny to think about this. Someone would actually pay to have someone killed because he doesn't like the fact that his favorite scream is being shit talked by a black guy. 
We all know Sandilla isn't exactly the most accepting person around, and his hatred for Tevin really shined through in what he posted. I have no doubt in my mind that he is one of the reasons Tevin's Twitch account went to the chopping block. So, on one faithful stream on Halloween in 2018, DSP brought in Kat for their first co-op live stream, and as usual, Kat looked like she wanted to be anywhere in the world than on Phil's screen that day. She had to watch Phil fuck around, playing shit like Silent Hill and dealing with his wheelchairs and chat for over three hours. At one point during the screen, she had her headphones on to listen to something else besides Phil's goat laughing. We shouldn't forget that Phil's choice for a costume is fucking terrible. He was trying to roleplay as Bob Ross and do an impression of him, but instead of Bob Ross, we got a damn child predator. Hello, my children. So after the break, Phil comes back to his screen without his stupid ass costume to notify his fans that Kat wasn't coming back to the screen. She stated that she was actually going out to party with her friends, but DSP used this to air his aggression out towards Tevin. Um, some people earlier were asking what happened to Kat. Uh, bottom line is, she's, you know, basically bummed out that so many people were trolling and it sucks because i knew that was going to happen as i've told you guys you know previously cat has nothing to do with myself or my content or any of the negativity associated with me and she thought oh this would be something nice to do to dress up for halloween and come by the stream and hang out with everyone and the excessive amount of trolling that was going on basically got to her and she says i want to go do other stuff you know i've been here for two games and i'm not in a good mood anymore and I want to go do other stuff. So she did, basically. She went on. She, you know, she's actually not even home right now. She wanted to leave because she was in such a bad mood. Um, you know, and it sucks. Because I would, you know, honestly, if the trolling wasn't so bad and if things weren't so nasty, she probably would be in my stuff a lot more often. But that's the reason why she really hasn't been in anything. Because the trolling got so nasty. You know, stuff about stupid shit, you know about her looks, about her past stuff, has nothing to do with anything going on. And, you know, it pisses me off because this is something special that we were building up and talking about for, for weeks and weeks, and she was really excited for it, and she went and got a costume for it and everything. And here she is trying to, do, she was going to start doing commentary. The first thing she sees when she looks at stream chat is trolling and nasty shit about her. And it totally turned her off, and basically after two games, she was like, I just don't want to be there anymore. And I was like, all right, you know, I'm not going to make you, you know, if you really are upset. You know, it sucks. There's nothing much else that we can do. Um, you know, there, there's a sick motherfucker on the internet called Tevin who likes to illegally reach, restream my fucking streams and has an army of fucking trolls who are the only reason why he has any notoriety is because he copies my shit and he eggs his trolls on to do negative shit like this, to come to my stream and to basically make fun of my girlfriend and do nasty shit. It's his fault that this kind of stuff happens. And anyone who supports that kind of fucking content is a mentally ill asshole who has no fucking conscience or morals. And the bottom line is the only reason he does it is because he knows he can get away with it because YouTube won't shut down his streams even though what he does is completely illegal. They don't care. YouTube does not give a shit. So he runs away, can't do it on Twitch anymore. He's banned from Twitch from doing it. So now he has to go other places where basically it's like the Wild West and they won't listen and they won't shut down stuff that's illegal or bullying or, or you know, that kind of stuff. There, there's a sick motherfucker on the internet called Tevin who what? likes to illegally reach, restream my fucking streams and has an army of fucking trolls. What the fuck? The only reason why he has any notoriety is because he copies my shit and he eggs his trolls on to do negative shit like this, to come to my stream and Am to I gym now? my girlfriend and do nasty shit. It's his fault. That it's my fault! Happens. It was clear to see that Kat wasn't enjoying herself on that screen, and most likely used the trolls as an excuse to get the hell out of there. It sure as hell made for a great Halloween, and spawned one of the greatest memes in DSP's history. So nothing pretty entertaining happened until July 2019. DSP was doing his usual blackout screen. That consists of him finding the house to camp in for hours until someone comes and kills him. It just so happened that it was Tevin's birthday, and his chat rated DSP screen to inform him of this and demanded that he wish Tevin a happy birthday on screen. What happened as a result of this was just a complete soft fist. Why does everyone want me to give Tevin a birthday shout out? You guys are fucking lame trolls. What? Who cares if I say fucking happy birthday to Tevin or not? Happy birthday to my number one fucking thief who deserves jail time for the amount of fucking stuff that he steals illegally, except that YouTube won't do anything about it, and he knows that I can't afford to stop him. Happy birthday, shithead. <laughs> there you go. You happy? You got his five seconds of fame? There, that's out of the way. Now can we have a, can we play for the rest of the night? 
Holy shit, man. Why do you give credit to fucking no-loads? Someone who never would have been known for anything if it weren't for me. Yes, let's talk about him all night. He'd love it. You guys would love that, though. I mean, let's face it. People who follow him, they're like fucking... They idolize him and shit. They probably want to hold his dick when he pisses, too. You know? If they could, they probably would. That's how these fucking... These mentally challenged people are, man. <laughs> oh, my God. He, yo, you know what's funny? Did he even wish Cat a bir Cat happy birthday when she had a birthday? Or did the trolls have to bring it up first? I actually don't remember. Oh. We don't uh, want to talk about that. I need a better gun than the Vapor to put all these attachments on. I think Tevin might have got a better birthday shout out than Cat did. No! See, someone just said, is, Te is Tevin the worst detractor? No, not by a long shot. He's not the worst guy out there. There's people out there who actively are trying to hurt me. They're trying to fuck me over. They're trying to get me to lose my ability to make money. They're trying to really ruin my life. There's people out there like that. Tevin is not like that. Tevin is just someone who wants to ride my coattails and make money and pop get popularity off of my name. Because when he makes fun of me, people laugh. You know, that's different than someone who actually is actively trying to hurt me. I think that Tevin understands that uh, he would want me to continue to be able to make content so he could continue to make fun of me, right? He's not that stupid. He's not, I mean, he's not a nice guy by any means, but I don't think that Tevin is a stupid guy. He knows he can get away with what he does. He makes money doing it. Why wouldn't he, right? There, But there are really, really fucked up people out there who actually have do, do things behind the scenes that are so fucked up. I don't, I don't want to talk about them because they're giving attention to fucked up stuff. Okay, that's why I don't even mention half the shit that I go through on a daily basis because if you guys actually knew what it was, it would just give more attention to it and make more assholes do this kind of shit. So I'm not even going to fucking bring that stuff up, okay? But no, in, this, in the total scheme of things, someone like Tevin, he hurts my, my business because he illegally steals my stuff and restreams it without permission and a lot of people might go check his stuff out instead of mine and contribute to him instead of me when in reality, I'm the reason he ever was known and he basically owes everything to me that he even has any kind of a fucking following. And the day that I decide that I turn off my stream, that's the end of his shit, right? But, that being said, he's not as nearly as harmful as some other people out there. So, there. So, so. in conclusion, <clears throat> he hates me, obviously a lot, from restreaming. Okay. But he doesn't talk about he what the destroyed. trolls do. Besides, he doesn't talk about what the other trolls do because other people would copy them. Now, well, if you I see it makes him this fucking mad just for somebody to sit around and make fun of him on the stream. Why would other people not do that? I don't even know who that is. Someone's saying, name it some obviously works I don't even know if you want to make him mad. Someone actually just sent me a dollar and said, Tevin has given more back to his fans and to charity than you ever have and you make more money than him. He breaks the law. You literally might as well say, yeah, well, the drug dealer down the fucking street, you know, donates to charity and does nice things for his customers. He breaks the law. Every time he turns on a stream and illegally restreams anyone without permission, he's breaking the law. He is an actual fucking criminal that can't be taken to, to, to task because there's no policing for that on the internet unless you sue him. You are actually saying that someone who breaks the law on a daily basis is a better person than someone else. You are a fucking moron. <laughs> oh my god, you are a moron. A complete idiot. I, rob, I regularly rob banks and steal legitimate money from a legitimate business, but because I give that some of that money to charity, I'm completely uh, immune Circle to any criticism. Imminent. Get to and I'm like, I'm the best guy ever. There's a guy in here, so I'm trying to figure out. Still He's comparing restreaming him to robbing banks. You know how mad he would get if somebody compared his, like, uh, min minimum shit to really extreme bitch. stuff like this? The best guy ever. There's a guy in here. So Slander tipped one dollar. Do you understand how him, fucking you know? mad he would get? Imagine if we compared just him not paying taxes to, like, robbing a bank. You know how mad he would fucking get? That's nothing like robbing a bank. You fucking Bro, stupid I idiot. Restream equivalent to robbing a bank oh, and you know, selling drugs. Why does the black dude have to sell drugs, BSP? No, you dumb bitch. It wasn't fraudulent. Pretty weird. Yeah, compare, compare what he do on pre-stream to a homeless person standing outside asking for money and see how salty he get. Would he compare a restream to robbing a bank? Hopefully we get him telling us how it's not a comparison and he was just trying to make a point.
because you know that's the yes that's, that's, that's correct coming up next. so around 2020 Tim was finally able to get his twitch account back and he was able to scream on the site once again after this happened, Tim started to focus less on rescreaming DSP and put more focus on rebuilding his Twitch career, which is pretty understandable. You can only take with dealing with Phil's antics for only so long. He still put out a pre-recorded video whenever DSP did something stupid though. Tim's sudden disappearance from rescreaming made DSP see Tevin in a more positive light than he used to. I should take this opportunity because he, he mentioned Tevin expand on. He's like, like, Tevin is your biggest troll. No, he's not. Tevin is not my biggest troll. Tevin... Annoying, but did he ever actively maliciously do something to actually like really hurt me? No, he made fun of me, he made money off of me and my work, but he didn't ever try to like ruin my fucking life and family like some people have. So he's definitely not the biggest troll I've ever had. And he moved on, right? He moved on to do other stuff. I, you have to give someone credit. I, I said over the years. I said it was a shame with Tevin because Tevin had talent. You could tell he had talent because he could retain an audience and people liked him for his personality. So it's a shame he couldn't turn that towards something else positive. And apparently he's moved on and doesn't do negative shit about me anymore. So you got to give the guy credit. I mean, obviously I still don't like the guy for all the years of you know, fucking horse shit that he put me through. But at the same time, that's respectable that he moved on and did something else, right? Well, this didn't last for too long after Tevin returned to screen talking about DSP's ban on Twitch. And this, for some reason, made DSP mad as fuck. He let the mask completely slip and he took to Twitter basically begging his fans to flag down Tevin and get him banned once again from Twitch. After I give credit and wish him well for finding success after the years of stuff he did to me, he goes and does this. Tevin. You are a good for nothing loser who deserves to lose Twitch partnership for this repeated disgusting behavior, but likely won't. Calling his people's attention to heinous content and asking them to flag it for being heinous isn't false flagging, unless you condone said behavior. Laughing at my wife crying when I lost my Twitch partnership and saying she should divorce me is far over the line of acceptable. It baffles me that there are Twitch partner screamers who do this kind of toxic screaming regularly to make money off the misery of others. But I'm the one who lost his partnership for no reason whatsoever. Fuck it. Report this fool because he sure as hell deserves it. I'll say it properly. If you personally feel that Tim is toxic for our hate fest on Twitch today, including laughing at my wife for crying and saying she should divorce me, is a violation of the TOS and not proper for a partner, then you should report it. By no means am I making this a call to action, but for so long, people have been getting away with this kind of toxic behavior and making money on it with no repercussions whatsoever. I got suspended for making fun of how a guy looked in his avatar. This goes far beyond that. The only way you can make a difference is to stand up for what you believe is right. So if you think a Twitch partner screamer making a 4 hour scream solely to dance on the grave of another person and repeatedly insult his wife is wrong, then by all means, tell Twitch just that. By the way, I refuse to give a second of time on my screams to this cowardly nonsense. The fact Tevin waited to do this on my day off shows his character. Tomorrow I'll scream games and we have fun, and that's it. This pussy fart doesn't exist to me outside of the Twitterverse. I forgot to mention that he later deleted these tweets, but they were archived. He then went on to talk about this on his pre-screen the next day. All that resulted from this was Tevin's Twitter account getting suspended, but I'm pretty sure it's been brought back by now, not like it really mattered anyway. Tevin really doesn't post much on his Twitter account. After this, Tevin really hasn't done anything involving DSP, besides the New Year's scream he did, which he took down after he was done screaming. And now we all await the day that he'll come back and shit talk DSP like he used to. But I doubt it. Tevin really seems to enjoy what he does over on Twitch. And honestly, you can't blame him. I think it's funny that all the shit DSP used to talk on Tevin about how he's riding his coattails and Twitch kicking him out and making him move over to YouTube. Now his account is the one that's banned and he's the one currently screaming on YouTube while Tevin is doing it big over on Twitch. If you ask me, I think Tevin is the best troll in the DSP community because he knew him to stop and actually came out the winner. I see some comments on some of my videos saying that I could be the next Tevin because he's a black dude from Louisiana and I'm a black dude from Louisiana and we both dislike DSP but I can never be Tevin. Yeah, I can make a couple videos discussing DSP and reacting to some of his shenanigans every now and then, but rescreaming him is definitely a no-go. DSP is boring as fuck. The only screams that I could possibly see myself doing is when he's playing fighting games, just to see him get his ass kicked. There's also plenty of people who rescreen Phil, and they're doing a pretty good job at it, 
so I don't think I'm really needed in that department. So all in all, I can't really be Tevin. I can only be Mortis. Alright guys, that'll do it for today's video. I'll be seeing you for part 9 of A Vegas Journey. Let's take a second to shout out my Patreons. Mark Winsney, Wis, Wisney, I, I can't say that. Joel, Sexy Mustang 10, and Otto Pico. Your support to my channel is greatly appreciated. If you want to check out my Patreon, the link will be in the description below. If you liked the video, then please leave a like, share a comment with your opinions, I'll be sure to read them. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, the road to 14k is steady climbing. Alright guys, I'll see you in the next video. See you later. Oh my god, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my god, no, we gotta stop the stream. I just received a dollar tip from an anonymous tipper. And they just informed me that Almighty Tevin is watching my stream right now and talking crap about me. Ah!